YouTube. It's been a while. We're gonna do this unboxing right now and it's gonna be amazing. So hopefully, hopefully you don't notice the giant poopy drips <laughs> I was on gonna the say, box. You put the clean side out, that was nice. I, uh, I tried, it didn't work. I tried to clean it. <laughs> we don't know what it is, but I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> uh, anyway guys, so if you're new to the channel, what we do is we open boxes and we build them. What is this thing? It's a mall 1500 millimeter in blue. Yes, that's right, because this is straight from FMS. Amazing, so we're gonna open this up right now. We're gonna build it just like we do on this channel for our Unbox Build and Radio setup. That's the way we do it. And that is if I can get the tabs open. And as soon as we're done building it, we're gonna wait for a beautiful day to fly it because it's been pretty much terrible days and worse days Might lately. Might be waiting a while. Oh, look at that, it's so gorgeous. It's like deja vu building this plane because we've built them before except they were under a different lineup in different branding, but similar build. Okay, so also I just wanna point out something here. See, there are optional floats. So I believe ours, I don't know which one we have. It's a surprise. So it's a surprise. We'll find out if they're in here or not. But just make sure you get the one you want because we're gonna be flying ours from the ground because as you can see, there is no pond out there yet. But someday in the near future, we hope that there is. <laughs> that is if we can. Get people to answer their phone. Well, that's not always true. We have one guy that answers his phone. Yes. Just a little bit more expensive. A little bit. By like seven times as much. <laughs> so anyway, I guess it's expensive to answer the phone these days. <laughs> oh, we got floats included. Wow, amazing. Look, we have some floats there. Okay, so as you guys know, the Mall is a stull, a short takeoff or landing vehicle. It is amazing. We did one not too long ago, probably like what, three or four years ago. And it was amazing then, it'll be amazing this time. That was weird. What the heck was that? Is that the tire? There's tape on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox it right now. We don't always do the floats because we don't have ponds on our property yet. We used to have ponds in the development where we lived and then there was a giant pond where we filmed and so it worked out really good. And so if you guys have the opportunity to fly float planes, that's cool. But we just set these things aside for the moment. And if we ever do a float assembly, we'll try to get that on video and we'll add it to the playlist for a particular airplane, which is one of the hopes and dreams we have by putting in our own pond so that we can fly off of it and then add that feature to planes that include that feature. Then we can do other things like boats. Boats and rowboats and weed oh, whackers. We've been needing some water. more of those things to, yeah, pretty much. You usually make like a little kit of the floats to kind of keep it all together and label what plane it goes to and stuff. That's right. That's what we do. Okay, so we've got that. Okay, pretty amazing. It's kind of a big nut sack. It, oh, nut and bolt sack. 11, 11 by seven prop, bullnose, cool. amazing. Okay, we're just taking these things out one piece at a time, guys. I can't do it all at once. Okay, a silver spinner. Pretty. Okay, looks fine. It is white underneath, that's an unusual choice. I figured they'd use black as a base. Okay, got the spinner adapter, okay. Then we're just gonna probably have to undo this. Oh my goodness, they didn't fold it, yes! We hate folded manuals on this channel because usually when we ignore them, it's because they were folded vigorously <laughs> in half and had nothing to do with me being a man. Right. At all. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut this out. There's definitely some extra pieces because we got the floats included on ours. Now, if you buy one with the floats, cost a few bucks more, but honestly, if you live in a Northern environment where you're gonna get some snow, they are really fun for that too. Okay, so here's the float assembly. It's got this little goopy thing on there. And then there's a rudder that's only installed here on one of the two. We'll be paying attention 
On the bow, they've got this plastic reinforcement. I kind of wish that would go all the way to the front because that's where I tend to get most of the wear and tear on the floats that we have. These are kind of like a hollow thing, so hmm, this one might not be hollow. Yeah, I don't know if this, this one's not hollow. There's just hollows for the assembly here and then where the servo goes, okay? So like I said, I put those off to the side, so don't be off put by that. If we do a float equip, if we equip a plane, this one does not have the water rudder, just to be clear. And yes, these are ambidextrous, except they're not. See, look, mm. they've got that rib on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you go. And also these planes on floats are really fun. Like I was saying, if you get snow where you live, then you can use them on snow, which is kind of handy too. And it gives you a new way to fly your planes. Oh yeah, that looks really nice actually. Clean and beautiful. I like the blue. I do too. I like this. That's a nice, mm -hmm. that's a nice finish on there. Okay. We have wing joiner here. I try not to take out the cool stuff first. So we're just gonna do all the boring stuff first, like the wing rod. This is not made of carbon fiber, it's fiberglass, but it's very thick and very I heavy. They needed weight. Yeah, I don't know why they made it so heavy. They must have been trying to get the CG right with that. Okay, so let's cut this thing out, see what we got over here. Can't quite get the, yeah, can't quite get that out yet. Okay. All right, so the horizontal stabilizer, nice reinforcement in the middle, but still got a little bit of flex to it. And then on this plane, they've got these little snappy dues that go down, little wing struts. Looks like a nice enough pinch hinge. Looks like they might have a glue reinforcement in the middle. It's kind of hard to tell actually. I don't know, maybe there isn't. But either way, if both sides move at the same rate, I'm good usually. All right, so let's pull out the wings. Oh yeah, by the giant flap, awesome. And I believe that's a Fowler flap. And look, this one lived red before it was blue. Interesting. Okay. So this is the wing strut adapter. Okay, looks really nice. Everything seems pretty good. Uh, no ball joints. Oh. That's kind of interesting. This. Ball links. Okay, moving that and it moves, but the servo doesn't. Okay, so let's, there we go. No, not a Fowler flap, just, uh, I don't know if that's called a slotted flap, but. Someone will tell you. The yeah, comments. somebody will tell me. If I said it wrong, they'd tell me for sure. Okay, so we have the vortex generators here and the raised panel lines, which look really cool. Okay, so we'll just lay that wing over here. And then we have the other wing, looks exactly the same. So you can see we've got beautiful LEDs and trim scheme right here. Really nice match on the paint color to the background. Okay, so it looks really nice. Got an antenna spot here too. And then this is just decorative. So just pulling this little protective cover off here. I don't know why they put those on there. It seems kind of like a weird thing to do. All right, so what else do we have in here? This is a 1.5 meter size. So it's a bigger plane. Um, when I say bigger, I mean, it's 1.5 meters, however big that is compared to what you're used to. But I love the way they fly, really good plane. It's got some speed, it's got some flight, general aviation style goodies that we love. Oh, that was weird. And one of the reasons I love this plane is the cockpit and canopy area is so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I love that you can see inside and it's actually pretty good plastic. You can actually sort of see through it as you can see here. Mm -hmm. So that's good instrument clusters, really nice. And then of course you've got the formerly red, now blue. So I don't know if they like literally just repainted that or they just had red parts Already from the previous ready. version. <laughs> okay. And then as you can see, this is one of the areas I'm not, I wasn't a fan of on version one because this was not reinforced, but it feels like it is now. There's plastic there. I remember this thing was sharp enough that it would catch. 
and made it really hard to load the batteries. That is actually a detail. Yep, it's a detail, not a drip. I thought it was a drip at first. And then the tail wheel, as you can see here, rock hard, float adapter points, and then the access point for adding your receiver. Okay, so if you lift that, you can see the Reflex V2, which is a stabilizer, provides for auto leveling and all that good stuff. So you can just use a basic receiver. So that saves a few bucks, but we have found that if you really want the absolute best performance, um, I would suggest going with AR630, AR631, and then go ahead and throw in some AS3X and get rid of the reflex if you want slightly better performance. But we've been okay with it, especially on non-super crazy fast planes. Um, and to be honest with you, some of the crazy fast planes have been good too. Yeah. Just depends. I just feel like there's certain models that haven't done as good with the reflex, which is kind of weird. Like, I don't know. Hard to put your finger on exactly which one's going to be good, which one's going to be not so good. Oh, and by the way, that cable that I threw over there, that allows you to reprogram the reflex flight controller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which we've... We've never done. Never done. And don't have plans to do it either. Okay. Do you want to know why? Do I want to know why? There's only so much stuff you can know, and I don't care to know that. Yeah. Because I'm not going to know it. I'm going to do it once, and I'm going to forget it immediately. We're going to have to look it up every time, and every I'll have time. to read you the directions. Yeah, that's right. And that's part of the reason why we've loved Ford programming on the AS3X setups. Now, I got to say, ugh, goodness gracious. It's like, ugh. Oh, man. Yeah, it feels like a Tuma. It's like <laughs> the opposite of what you want it to feel like. <laughs> okay, so we have the landing gear. Uh wheel fairings and a little bit of a little bit of splayability there but i can tell you this in my experience with them all the first time i didn't remember it being real bouncy wouncy so you should be able to slow it down and bring it in for a gorgeous landing and that's really where you're going to struggle if you have really hard tires is if you have a plane that doesn't want to lay down flat that likes to bounce on you i don't remember having that problem with you <laughs> or if they get down and chatter t -t 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 -t, sport cub S3, S2, I don't know why I said S3, 1300 milliamps or 1300, well, you could fly it on 1300 milliamps, but it's 1300 millimeters, the gold and silver one. Oh, Those yeah. landing gear always splayed out and uh, got bent. And so that's one thing we like to do on this channel is give you guys a feel for whether or not this will be a good beginner plane. I don't think this would be a bad beginner plane, but we'll reevaluate that during the flight performance because honestly, this is a V2 for us. And, well, it's actually, is it a V2? Well, it's technically not, really. not a it's V2 not. because we haven't ever done it for FMS, we've but it, we've yeah. done it before. Yep. And uh, so we try to give you guys an idea of whether or not this would be a good fit for you if you're a new pilot or if you're a returning pilot. If you're a returning pilot, no problem. Should be pretty easy to fly. If you're just getting into the hobby, there might be better choices. But the thing is, stole aircraft short takeoff or landing, STOL, is going to be a good um within the general aviation choices that'd be a great place to start because you can fly in tighter spaces and you can take off and land on shorter runways which is nice so anyway stay tuned what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our plane sand set up and come right back mm, that's good <laughs> 3200 4s 50C. Now, you might be saying, Brian, that battery does not look like you've flown with it. Yes, I haven't. True. Sure. Let's stick it in the hole and see what happens. Yes, these batteries over here that are rolling around on the floor, <laughs> they are the ones that I've flown. And you're like, what are you talking about? I'm new to the hobby. Well, what that means is that I have destroyed them. That's a smart battery charger. This thing's like 50 or 60 bucks. These ones are like 250 or 60 bucks but they're two, two individual chargers and they're 200 watts each, which is huge. This is one at 55 watts. So this one produces like 400 watts or something like that. I don't remember if it shares 200 watts, but I've charged two batteries at like 20 amps at the same time, which is nuts. And then this thing here is just over here being alone. And I would never buy this one because it's 1200. And this one's 2200 and if you're gonna buy this you might as well just buy that yeah. take my word for it definitely even though my display immediately broke off 
immediately. It was like, like months later. But if you're on a budget, the little one to If you're on a budget, buy the expensive one still, because this is the one you mm -hmm. want. It's gonna do, this is only gonna do a 4S, this does 6S. But if you buy this first, and then you buy this one in a few months when you realize you need it, you'll still use that one for your small batteries. Just remember, you're gonna need this soon. Yes, even so don't if mess you around. don't think so. Don't mess around and waste a lot of money on the way. Even if you tell your wife you're never gonna need batteries that big. <sighs> That's right. Then you end up with I would start that. I remember back when we started, I told my wife, I'll just need one plane that's of each style. Each style. Which in my book there were like two styles, so that seemed like a pretty fair deal. Okay, we're gonna stick some things into other things and make this into an airplane from a bunch of pieces. Okay. This build's gonna be hard. Oh, that's wrong. Uh, that's right. How did, how did you know that was right? Because these don't line up if you put them in wrong. See this? That angle of the dangle there. Okay, watch this, watch this. Whoop. Let's try sticking it in backward. Oh! Go over to there. Oh. It doesn't I fit. See. And there's okay, an now I'll angle. Turn it the right way. Yep. Okay. So now when this goes in the right way, you'll know because it'll fit nicely. Ah, yes, very nice. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to take this amazing screwdriver holder that you can't buy on Amazon or anywhere else because I made it one night when I was bored. We I have, wasn't actually bored. We have those? <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was desperately behind on everything and I made that anyway. Instead. All right, so the landing gear are gonna go in like that. It's uh, pretty complicated stuff, but there is a manual here to help outline just how complicated it could be. Let me take a sip anyway. from our not sponsors, Rami RC. Mm. We love Rami. So good. So cool. All right, you ready? If you could just read the name of that for me, that'd be great. 1500 millimeter mall. Dang it. Got me again. It's not the Molly. No. Okay. We learned. I learned from people correcting me. Like unnecessary ease. It's the way we do it in aviation. All right. The HKM 3.0 asterisk 16. I'm pretty okay. sure that means 3.6 by 16 millimeters. Okay. Let's do the magic of RC build. Empty the sack onto the table. Find your wires. There are one for lights, evidently. Okay. Two for rudder. And you're like, uh, how many rudders are there? Well, there's one that's in that thing. And then there's one that's on the plane. And then three for flaps. So we have lots of Y cables. This is a Y servo splitter cable. So what happens is it takes and splits the signal and power and ground and goes to two things for one thing, okay? And they're in parallel, folks. All right, so within this nut and bolt sack, here, put your hands out and hold my nut and bolt sack. There, yes, hold them. Look at how many of the exact same thing there are. They all look like they're the same. Sweet. Which size did I need, Megan? That one. I'm that sorry, size. Gamma Crew. Shh. I just didn't annoy people that hate us. Man. Dang it. Missed an opportunity. I know, I did. To be annoying. Okay, so these are um, some linkages and control rods for something. Why? Oh, that would be for the rudder and elevator. Yeah, okay. Pretty simple. And then these things are going to be used. These little set screws are used for the floats. So... We will retain this special nut and bolt sack and we're gonna wrap it up in some plastic wrap and we'll write on the side of it, Mall 1.5, the blue one, not the other two red ones. Right. Do okay. all those? See? Wowzers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There it is, guys. Okay, so the reason we show you these steps is because first of all, our videos are longer and therefore we lose more credit from YouTube. Yeah. Secondly, because we wanna show you how this is done. These are the antennas, not antennae, because if it was on an animal, like if I was an animal, these would be ant antennae. But I'm not an animal, I'm a machine. 
Okay, look at these. And you're not going to put those on yet because they're going to be in the way. Look. Yes. Look. How do you differentiate between what holds the lighting or down? We need... Why don't you show them what you're looking at instead of... I was going to see if I could figure it out on my own. The flat ones. The flat ones. Okay. So these ones, again, are for the floats. Okay. So those floats are going to need some things. Here, this one's empty. Yeah. Let's... Well, that one's got small holes in it. Oh. Yeah, it's got... I thought I, thought I remembered seeing a hole in it. Yeah. Don't put your nuts in a spot else. where they could spill out unexpectedly. That would be... That would be awkward. So we're just going to put this down here. Yeah, like this nut sack and bolt sack. Yeah. It has a hole in it. See? Don't right there. Don't store your, like, don't put anything sweetener helpful. in there. Sweetener. Goodness gracious, what kind of channel do you think this is? Okay, so we're going to put this thing across there, and it's not going to fit at all, even remotely. See? That didn't work. So you remember how we just told you that was for the landing gear? I think maybe that was from the that was from another drawing from some other time in history because they don't even seem to line up even remotely. So I think what's going to happen is these ones are actually the ones. So that does not look anything like the drawing. So I bet what they did is they recycled this manual from some other manual that they made for some other manufacturer. Wow. That's or for some other brand that they had built it for, like really <coughs> high. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry to sneeze there. Okay. It's like a weird cough sneeze thing. But anyway, I'm just gonna stick this right here. Hopefully there's not like some feud or something going on. We just enticed all the problems. Any Excuse me, uh, yeah, right there. There it is. Okay, so we're gonna stick these down in there, make them fit nicely. It's gonna be wonderful. And look how great that fit is, folks. That's gonna work for both the floats and for the aircraft with landing gear. Okay, see this? This is where these are gonna go. If you were gonna put the floats on, they would go in there. I might suggest if you have a tight space, like if you're living in a van down by the river, then you can keep these in the plane right there. Maybe don't buy planes if you're living in a van. If you're living in a van down by the river, you can afford to buy planes, and you should, with floats. Well, you can fly them off the river. Did you not connect the dots? Come on, man. Okay, so what number, what number should we choose, Gamma Crew? Hmm, let's see. I'm let's go to two, or should two. we go to should we go to two? Look how two much nicer that was. Wow. That's so much better than the sleeve briefcase that they came in. That is the right size. Two millimeters. It, it always is. N noun fan? No. Now, now fan. New. It's for all the now fans. If you were spelling like we spell, this is the way it would be spelled. But you don't. So it just looks like some nonsense word. At least I put some vowels in it this time. Are no. you trying to block me? Yes. Okay. Good <laughs> job. You could just get a shot of that. That'd be great. <laughs> Camera crew, come on, get the endoscope out. Oh, we don't use that on this channel. Sorry. It's the other channel. It's for other things. It's the other one. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. We have to lubricate the tip. Boy, she's squeaking all over the place. Look at that. Oh, by the way, you know something exciting happened, guys. We got some new interweb tools. Oh, I thought you were going to say something related to what you're talking about. No, totally unrelated. Has nothing to do with the Can van I, down by the river at all. Oh, they can't see it from here. What? You want to show them the big, ugly? The big, ugly thing? The They'll big, ugly? They'll notice it. Wait till they see it. Well, we might have to dip the tip in the Dawn dish detergent. So maybe what we'll do is we'll take and have like a midway build, and then we can show them our new inter, our interweb new device. Interweb. It's going to be it's gonna be helpful, though, because we, um, we have historically used Starlink. Uh, and before that we had Viasat. Viasat was like over $180 a month. It was always different every month for some <laughs> it reason. It just depended on what they felt like. Ah, Rami RC, so good, so cool. He's gonna send you an email and be like, please stop slurping out of my cup. That's not, well, he didn't make that one himself. Somebody faked that, I'm sure. Actually, no, that was, that was bought by Esteban, my yes. flying buddy. On an official Rami website with Miss Prince, but that's okay. And then you broke it and glued a handle back on. Well, I don't know that I broke it. Somebody I broke it. I didn't break it. Somebody broke it. That's all I'm going to say. 
So Rami, if you're watching, <laughs> you, you aren't, I'm sure, then send me a new one. He's busy building something cool. He is busy building something cool. He's hanging out with Ty Perry. All right, so check this out. I noticed there's a large noticeable gap in the landing gear here, okay? Mm -hmm. If you want to, do I feel, why do I feel like I'm at McDonald's right now? And I just what? ordered a Big back, and I'm like, wait, hold on. That's what I saw. <laughs> this is what you delivered. What the heck is going on here? Let's flip this thing over and see if we stuck it in the hole the wrong way or something. Hmm. No, looks like we stuck it in there right. I just wonder if they're going to get pounded in there over time. Oh. I know. That's what I said too. I don't know. I guess we're just going to go. We're gonna go with it, folks. Okay. If it fits, it ships. Any other trademark things I should say while we're at it? <laughs> this, this next step is gonna be, it's gonna be incredible, guys. I hope you waited this long, because it's gonna be good. See this? We're gonna stick this right here. Boop. Just like that. Just not like that. We're gonna stick it like this, just like that. Boop. We're gonna take one of these screws, one of the many nuts and bolts from the bolt sack. Nut sack, bolt sack. And we're gonna tighten this down and you're like, that is so easy. I'm used to taking six months to build balsa wood aircraft and they look gorgeous at the end, except that was only what I thought they would look like and then I built it and it looked terrible. Yeah. But it still was cool and still definitely worthwhile, noteworthy exercise in build quality. You'll notice that these foam planes are easy to build. They go together relatively quickly and they get you in the air and they also help to prevent one and dones. What are one and dones, camera crew? People who buy the wrong plane at the wrong time and they have a bad experience. And then they quit. And they never come back and watch our channel again. Which is terrible for our channel. And the hobby. And the hobby, but more and for our And your wallet channel. and whatever you told your wife. That's right. Well, no, if you told your wife that you were done, then she'd be happy and celebrate that. No, she'd be mad because you wasted money on something that you crashed into a field. I can't believe you bought that piece of foam and threw it in the garbage. You'd be like, what are you holding in your hand? It's my Starbucks. <laughs> like actually. I do not go to Starbucks, by the way. That's true. We, we can't afford that kind of stuff. Make my own coffee. Thank you very much. Somebody wants to support the camera crew. Send her a Starbucks <laughs> gift card. <laughs> And then she'll be able to run half my speed. <laughs> ooh, ooh. We got a lot of Starbucks. Yeah. Okay, so that's tight. Wow. Here, show them tightening. Yes. That is tight. Jeez, you don't have to break it. <laughs> break it. Goodness gracious. How strong do you think I am? Okay, so as you can see, nice thick root on this, which is nice. It's a beautiful look and feel. Okay. Let's give another amazing shot of my homemade apparatus here. Yeah, amazing, right? You even labeled it. That's right. I sort of, sort of did. Sort of did. All right, so now there should be some more screws in here. <gasps> oh no! I forgot to stick them in the hole. Look. What? Dang it. Do you have to stick them in the hole now? Dang it. Oh, you can stick them in the hole after the fact. Do you need to put your control linkages on first or are they gonna fit underneath? I am not thinking that far ahead. That's Seriously. also why I'm here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the, uh, we're gonna dip into the nut and bolt sack again. So right here, there's a couple like zip ties in here for some reason. I'm gonna put them over there. I'm sure they're for the floats. Just right there. So if you wanna look really close with me, see that? There they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's where they are. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab these screws right now. Oh my goodness. Wow, I spilled my nuts and bolts everywhere. Where are those anywhere? Okay, so we're just, while we're at it, we'll just pull this out. Now, if you guys really wanna make your building experience amazing, get a countertop that blends with everything. This is actually better than the last countertop we had, which sounds incredible because it's terrible for losing bolts. We specifically ordered it. We said, now, hold on, let me throw these nuts and bolts on the side and see if we immediately lose them. Yep, it passed. I believe you picked this countertop? I did. Yeah, she wanted quartz, and I was like, yeah, I want to be no, able to put a hot pan no, no, on no. it. No, 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 I wanted the lighter granite that has, like, the little purple-y. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, no. Yeah, so, see, you won your countertop that you complain about. Yeah. That has a lot of set screws. That's a lot of set screws, because there are set screws all over the place on these things. 
you need like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, four, six, eight. There you go. No extras though, so don't Jeez. lose them. Yeah, usually they're pretty good about giving us extras. Okay, so getting back to what we were doing here. Mm-hmm. We're just gonna grab a Phillips. Little teeny tiny one. Why are you? Oh yeah, that's a good fit. Okay. And we're just gonna stick this doohickey in that. I'm not left-handed at all. Yeah. Not even a little bit. Look at this. Let's watch the right-handed guy put something else try in to screw coffee? it with his left hand. We're gonna shut up. So guys, hopefully we saw you at Joe Nall. Or wait. Or maybe we're seeing maybe you. Maybe we're you seeing know. you. Kind of depends on how things go. A surprise. How the cookie crumbles. We were expecting to get this plane, and then we did. Int. And so now we're doing it. And it's taking the place of another plane. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, but we, we honestly don't know. We don't. It's we're a, not really trying to keep secrets. We really don't know. Yep. We really don't know. We don't keep no secrets from you. All right, so let's talk about the things that hold the elevator and rudder, also known as the linkages. They show some pictures here, okay, that are useless. Okay, yeah, yeah, I really needed a detail on putting the antenna in, but I didn't want a detail on putting the control linkages on. Thanks, FMS. Ah, here we are, yes, there it is. Stick that camera right in that space. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now listen, people. Don't skimp on the fuel rod. Fuel. Fuel tube. tube. Sorry. Stick the fuel tube through the hole. Slide it up here like this. Also, don't penetrate until you're ready to complete the job. Or to break it off. Uh, you, you're laughing now, but it's <laughs> happened on camera I many know, times. many times. In fact, the last video we filmed, I broke the tip. The tip off twice. Off. Twice. Yeah, and then I had That's to feverishly hurry, and then we didn't end up using that footage. It was so bad. It was. We clipped it out. We don't do that very often. It yeah. has to be pretty dang bad for us not to use this. Because be really, if this is good. Really boring. All right, so I'm so glad that you read that information and then didn't tell me. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Elevators on the outside and one in on the arms. Okay, so on the control arms, we are going to slide these into the hole on one hole in, and then we're gonna rotate, okay? Then we're gonna leave it. We're just gonna let it chillax, because this, we don't know where it needs to be yet, and so we're not gonna worry about it. We're just gonna slide this in. Nope, not there, not on the outside hole, the next one in. There we go, and then we're gonna rotate. Watch this, watch this, boom, there it is. All right, so one's gonna control the elevator, one's gonna control the rudder. And our next move is probably gonna be to put the wings on, don't you say? Yeah. Now, if you were really smart and not filming a video, you could stick these where they won't be seen again. Okay, so we're not gonna do that right now? Well, you can't land them because the wing isn't installed. But you can see how awkward this is gonna be. You guys see this latch? Very nice, pull the latch back, let it come up. Nice plastic reinforcement here. I don't think that was on the first mm, one. I kind of don't either. So now if we look inside of here, there's a rat's nest of wires. Fortunately, you won't have to look at it much, okay? So here is the s bus PPM mode, okay? So it's like just quite the mouthful. So this is going to um, actually change our mode from auto leveling to off, to stabilized only. Auto leveling and stabilized, off and stabilized. Those are the three modes. If you put it on a three position switch. Now, you have to use up a channel for that, so just keep that in mind. This is your aileron, so the ailerons do not have a Y splitter because this is what's going into your receiver. Okay, so same thing as this. This one's throttle. This one's throttle. Okay, so that goes to your throttle on your receiver and you're like, why does my flight controller need to have a throttle line? Good question. <gasps> what do we have here? Is it a little yellow? A thrust in reverse. So you can thrust in and then pull out. 
of the bank where the bush is. So if you want, we'll show you how to do that. That's gonna be fun. Mm, good. Excited. Lights, okay, lights, camera, action. We'll film the thrusting, reversing. And then rudder. Now rudder, we're not gonna need to use because rudder would normally replace this plug in the event, in the event that you wanted to use La Floats. So we'll have that in the kit for later. And then we have the flaps here too. And you're like, why do we have a Y splitter for flaps, Brian? Aren't they already landed on those wires? The answer is no. You wanna know why? Why? Because there's no wire pre-wired to the wing. Because they're not part of the... Oh, I might have had to puke a little bit here because I'm just trying to think, how the heck am I gonna get that wire up there? Wait, what? Yeah, what? I agree. Because think about it, look. No. Here's, the, yeah, yeah. Rudder, elevator, okay? Thrust reverse, okay? So let's just talk about this for a second. Whoop. Normally we would do, on a plane like this, let's talk about this for a minute. Okay, we also have lights. Let's just, let's just keep lights and flaps in mind. Okay. We're gonna come full circle, I promise. I'll close this one out, guys. So we have two wings, right? We have lights, we have ailerons, we have flaps, and then I don't know what else. Okay, so there's three wires going to here. See? One, mm -hmm. two, three. Why did they give us a flap servo? Why did they give us a servo splitter for flaps? We provide our own Y cable. I don't understand it. Oh, that's why. Because they're down here where I couldn't see. Oh, thank God. I was just about I was like, I do say. not want to have to tear this thing up. I was going to be throwing some stuff. Okay. Woo! Why did they not install these? What the heck? That is so yeah, why dumb. Why did they not just put the white cables Seriously, on? Seriously. Sometimes, I wonder, FMS will do weird stuff like this. It's like, oh no, we forgot the white cables. Just, just put them in the nutsack. Put them in the nutsack. Brian will show our people. Oh, hail Brian. It's exactly the way it goes. <laughs> Maybe Pretty not. Sure not. Hey, more like, oh, Brian, you take your, take your to lunch and finish your job for you. <laughs> okay, so the brown goes to the brown, the yellow goes to the yellow. Ah! All right, here we go. Okay. So hopefully you guys just forget everything I just said. We won't even clip it out. That's because we don't assume you're listening. <laughs> no, we assume you're not listening. Assume you're not listening. Double negative. I still said it correctly. I just added extra words that were unnecessary, assume. like usual. <laughs> you should expect that from me. It's true. Don't you know. Cheese goods. Brown to brown. Brown to brown. Okay, so those are the lights. Okay. And you're like, okay, okay, so you put the lights into a servo plug? That's one way. Or you could be a smart feller. And you could just take this extension cable, Y cable, and you could just stick it into anything. Wait, so are you gonna have to use a channel for the lights? No, that's what I was just explaining. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but thank you for, thank you for taking <laughs> the sunshine. Ah, <laughs> oh, we'll just unplug this rudder. Okay. And you're like, but Brian, I thought you said you could save that for your kit later. Yeah. Well, you could, but I'd rather not use my bind plug because it doesn't exist on the receiver I'm thinking about using. Okay. So then this will normally plug into your rudder on your flaps, or it's not your rudder on your flaps. It'll plug into your rudder on your floats. But in my case, I'm just gonna stick in the lights to that Y cable. And then I don't have to provide any spare parts like a Y cable. And that's gonna energize the lights in the wings, okay? So this is gonna be, this is gonna be amazing. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be one of the best things ever. We're gonna slide all this crap back in here. Flaps are ready to be received into the receiver by the receivee, okay? So look, look at all this crap here, guys. Yeah, like yeah whole, amazing. Look, we're gonna put it all, we're gonna stick it right in the hole. Okay, so it's all in there, folks. Everything you could possibly want. It's all stuffed in there nicely. And, and look at that nice little tight bundle we've got there. So you yeah, can do some thrusting. Zip ties. 
We're gonna get some zip ties. That's a great idea. Let's they use some provided zip ties. zip ties. Thank you, FMS, for thinking of everything. Ooh, they're beeping. They're ready. 3200 for us. We'll see if we can even stick it in the mm, hole. The wind is not ready. Oh, yeah. We're not going to be able to fly it right now. We could. I mean, we, it would just be a janky video. Yeah. Guys, if you were wondering why we don't film on windy days, it's because, A, stuff just doesn't look as good. You know, sure, you can fly on windy days. But it's just, if it doesn't look good, then, like, why do we want to do that? It's like we're trying to make a video to make it look good. Awesome. Not, like, misrepresent how good it is but also to show you how good it is compared to its competitive offering. Well, I mean, consistency. Oh, I saw something the other day. It was amazing. I have to tell you about it later. You're off supposed camera. to tell me something the other day later, and I don't think I did. I didn't. Okay, so we have one singular zip tie, and we have a bunch of wires. And we're like, let's, let's just do a count. We have one for thrusting, two for elevating, Three for rettering, four for thrusting again, five for mode, six for flaps, and seven for aileron. So let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you're like, are you really going to waste an entire channel for auto leveling? Seriously? Are you? Seriously? What would Rami do? First of all, he would have like built the whole thing himself. He would have been like, I'm just going to rebuild the whole thing yeah. from scratch. I have carbon fiber. and it I need to like redo the molds me. too. It'll take six weeks to print, but it'll be okay. So anyway, guys, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do the option of six channels. Six, not seven or eight. Because truthfully, if you went to eight, okay, what could you accomplish? A a humongous pain in the butt, and that is to split the Y cable out mm, for the ailerons, because then you could do crow, whoop, and whoop, simultaneously. These would act as spoilerons, and then these would act as just regular flaps. That'd be cool, but I don't really need that. Also, if you want to do a little thrust reverse, like a little pull out action, then what you could, like if you go into the bush and you're like, you don't like it there, you can just pull it right back out. I'm just on floats like this Wait, here. No, like if you're on floats flow and you're flying along and then there's like this big bush and you run into it, then you can pull right out. Trust me, I've been there. It is awkward if you don't have thrust reverse. So what we're going to do is we'll show you how to use it. And we have used it on one occasion and it's on that. Well, we put that plane away, but it looked like this one except smaller. And that was a 1400 millimeter T28, mm -hmm. which is an amazing plane, by the way. And yes, we did do that. And we did it all on a six channel plane, but it also had retracts and we locked the mode and we shared the flaps. We don't have to share the flaps on this because we don't have retracts here. We just have some rock hard granite made tires, which will be perfect for the application. Thank you, China, for such good engineering. Okay, so let's talk about receivers and I will come back with a handful of receivers like amazing movie magic. <laughs> Extended for editing. So this is a four channel. This is an AR410. We're not gonna use that. No. You know why? Because you need more than four channels. There's that. But honestly, if you wanted to do it without flaps, you could technically do four channel throttle, elevator, rudder, and ailerons. ailerons. It'd be so lame. That would be Don't sad. do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be like that guy. Then six channels. Okay, so now all of a sudden you get throttle, elevator, rudder, flaps, ailerons. Thrust reverse. Oh yeah. Or mode. For me, I don't need auto leveling. I don't want auto leveling, but you guys might. And honestly, it's a huge feature. It's huge, and I know huge. It's one of the hugest. You things. also don't need thrust reverse either. You're saying it just goes in and stays in the bush? Have you ever been in the wet, dank, right on the edge, and just right into the bush? Then you can't get out. Yeah, it sucks. It'd probably be bad. <laughs> okay. 
So now if you really wanna go nuts, this is not gonna have AS3X and safe because this is the 8020T. Now they also make the 8360T, which does have it. This is just the T as in telemetry. Now they also make a six channel that will give you the telemetry features of this. It looks just like a 637, but I think it's a 6611T or something like that. I always forget that one because nobody ever uses that one. Yeah. But the 637T is gonna give you AS Rix and safe. You don't need that feature and it's expensive in terms of what the cost component of these things is. This is just, I don't know, like 50 bucks. This is like 120 bucks. I think it's a lot more. And I never talk about prices on this channel because I don't want to talk about prices and then have it age really bad. And you're watching it like six years later and you're like, Brian, they're like $400 now. Yeah, that's why you buy what you want when you want it and you use it. And by the way, just a note to self, don't stock up on some of this stuff because what you want to do is get what you need now. Get a couple, don't get seven, okay? I know you want to support us, but get seven of what you use right now. One thing about this hobby is everything is always evolving and changing. I learned that the hard way, just trust me. That. We're giving good advice. That's what we do on this channel. wire basement looks the way it does. <sighs> so this would give you telemetry. It would give you pack voltage via the stupid cable, okay? And then you stick it into the doohickey there. That's a micro PH1S connector, okay? And then the 4S would be like if you really were broke and you like hadn't paid your bills or something and you still needed an airplane. In a van down by the river, but we're gonna use this. This is a perfect fit. It's gonna give you the best of both worlds. It's also gonna give you the ability to do thrust reverse if I don't screw something up, and that's always a possibility. Here on Brian Phillips RC, where we expect that you guys will love our channel so much that you're gonna smash the like button and probably buy some stuff from the link just because I gave you good advice that might actually cause us to earn less money on the commissions that we receive when you buy from the links. Yes, that's right, we get paid when you guys buy stuff. And that's how we fund our channel. And so hopefully you don't think we're just some greedy weirdos that love airplanes in some fetish style. No, you're just a weirdo. Everything but the greedy, right? Oh yeah, there it is. So if you look inside this package, you have a plastic thing and then, whoa, it's another manual for you to ignore, amazing. Okay, you can read that manual if you're like trying to get to sleep at night and stuff, it's pretty useless. And then there's this one's safety, important registration stuff. Okay, let's get this out. So this is not spatially aware. Okay, so when you use it, just keep in mind, you don't need to worry about where it ends up so it can just drop in there loose, okay? Which makes for a lot easier install than if you have AS3X and SAFE where you have to formally bond it, you have to firmly bond it to the aircraft so it can be aware of its position in time and space. And then correctively act for AS3X or auto leveling, which would be safe. Sensor assisted flight envelope or AS3X artificial three axis stabilization, right? Artificial or stabilization, three axis. Something like that. Anyway, yeah. it's stabilization. It was the right words, just the wrong. Yeah. I said sensor aided flight envelope for like years and then somebody finally corrected me. I was like, dang it. It's embarrassing. Are you plugging all that in now? I'm not gonna stick them in the hole yet. I just wanna show the people. So we're gonna have like one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no. That's because we won't need to leave, we won't need to leave this one out. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because we can set it. set it and forget it. Yep. You set it and then you unplug it and then you never plug it in again and it battery backed up or I don't know, it's electronically erasable memory or whatever that stuff is on that thing that reflex V2 and it will keep in the mode that you set it to upon its initial setting. And later on, you can change that if you would need it. But I would highly, 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 highly recommend. If you're gonna do auto leveling, that you make it so you can shut it off. Now, stabilization, you can leave it on pretty much all the time. That's not a big deal. But auto leveling, you wanna be able to shut it off if you get into a spot where you have a flyway where, you know, like, it's going out like this and you like need to shut it off because you got lots of wind and stuff. It doesn't happen usually on planes this size, but people have it happen all the time on like that little zero down there that's underneath the tip of the spear of the J-11. The Chinese fighter jet copied from the Russians. Licensed, but copied nonetheless. Okay, anyway, getting back to the point. So we're gonna set that first in our radio setup 
but we still have a wing and a prop and this thing. We got to do some thrust reverse. It's going to yeah. be all sorts of fun. Let's I'm thrust really this in right now. Watch this. Ready? Oh yeah. Wow. Oh boy. There it is. Jokey. That was good. <laughs> That's like super loud on your mic. I bet it is. <laughs> Known for blowing speakers. Ooh, that was not good. I dragged this into the other wing. That's why they put those little protective thingies on there. I took the protection off immediately. As soon as I knew I could get away with it, I took it off. Still close with us. Okay, so to put this wing on, and you're like, wait, 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 you were doing radio, radio setup, and then and you just, what, what happened? Why did you do that, Brian? You've got me confused. Come on, get to the radio setup, Brian. That guy's back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is not the right tool for the job. The prop? Yes. I don't know. I think it's pretty good. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we know you guys love butter knives. I have a reputation to upkeep. Speaking of butter knives. Yes. I can't say it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ask me about butter knives. If you go to Joe Nall. All right, here we go, guys. All right, so we have three light. Uh, we have lights. We have um, presumably flaps because, oh, ailerons. Ailerons, okay? So we have three wires, and you'll note they're sticking out there. That was just mostly a joke, so I'm gonna put that away for somebody else to use. Make sure, hey, remind me not to use that one. Okay. On my food. Not one of the kids use it. You're gonna need it again. Huh? You're gonna need it again. I'm gonna use this butter knife this oh, time. Okay. Yeah, so if you guys don't have a butter knife at your disposal, which is a obvious RC tool, uh, and for those of you who understand what I'm saying, give me an L-O-L-B-R-I-A-N, phillipsrc.com. That's where you can go to buy all your stuff you want. Okay, there you go. Look, flaps, lights, and ailerons. Okay, so we're just going to stick this thing in the, that thing and just really, whoa, wowzers. Oh my goodness. That's the best thing ever. Okay, you want to just, uh, you want to just hang tight there for a minute? On this side? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna slide this doohickey into that doohickey. I've, I've installed thousands of these things. Thousands? And every, every time, maybe not thousands, maybe hundreds. But even so, every time, it's just as awkward as the last. Pretty much. Yeah, okay. You can let go now. Got it. It's gonna balance now, okay. roughly. Yeah. I'm a scale technician, I know how to balance things. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, I was gonna go get four steps earlier and I, I bailed on my offer to get the forceps because, you wanna know why? The butter knife was better? It was worse, it was a lot worse. Forceps, hold on. Rami RC, so good, so cool. Some of you guys that are new to the channel don't understand that I'm buddies with Rami. Deep best friends, actually no. I, Rami is, I, I really enjoy Rami's content. He's some good stuff. He's gotten a lot bigger than us because he does things that people want to see and stuff like that. <laughs> it's cool and short. And short. What, whatever. His videos aren't super short, but he's so skilled. Yeah. I'm it's just crazy. a pretend, I'm just pretend skilled. Pretend skilled aileron. I think most people just think that's not skilled, but that's okay. Okay, brown is down. Guys, brown is down. Which way is brown, camera crew? Down. Okay. So brown is down. Goodness gracious. Okay, so Give clipped a lot of it extra in. Length there. Yeah, it's um, really challenging. Flap. You know, for some people that would be long. Okay. Well. You just need to be careful what you say. You don't want to alienate the crowd. I'm sorry. There it is. Oh, come on now. Oh, this one's weird. Sometimes if the pins don't line up right, you got to be kind of careful. You don't break them out. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, get in there. You guys see what I'm doing here? Oh yeah, there it goes. Sometimes you gotta wiggle that to get the pins to line up. I'm dead serious. Camera crew, quit sneering at me. Not sneering at all. Yes, you are. Lights. Okay, so I'm so confused. I don't know what to do. We only have two, but there's three holes. I'm gonna stick it into the two that are the closest matching color. How about that? That would be your negative for ground and your positive for red goes to the positive on the center. Now this is a JR Hextronics color code, which is orange or yellow, red and brown. Generally it's orange, I think. 
yellow. Orange, you're glad it's not yellow? That's yellow. It's yellow. Yellow orange. But if it was Futaba, um, then it would be red, black, and white. Okay, camera crew. Do you have just to stick that all in the hole? Yeah. Hold this up, right like there. Okay, now put the camera here off. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick it back in the hole, but I kind of do need your help for this stuff. So anyway, if it was red, black, and white, then you would use the red and black as well. Hey, can you Three, actually like hold two. the plane there? Grab the rod. Yeah, okay. grab the rod. There you go. Got it. Good job. Yeah, just having trouble. It's wanting to slide away on us, guys. Okay. Oh yeah, there it is. Wowzers. That was a good fit, guys. Wow. Grabbing a two millimeter driver. We're gonna get some more nuts and bolts out of the nut and bolt sack. We're gonna drop them in. And we're gonna try to secure this wing quick. Okay, sorry if I'm somewhat blocking you. Camera crew is desperately trying to use her not hand <laughs> to, hey, I need you Focus. to yeah. go ahead and abandon attempts holding that and go to the end and push in the wing somewhat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get the first thread started and it's not wanting to start. I remember we did have problems with that on our last mall. A little bit. Hey, yeah. abandon efforts on that and grab the plane stand underneath. Just push hard so I can push down. Why are, why are you pushing? Wait. Just put your hand on the plane stand and push down. Oh, okay. Like you have to actually stop it from moving though. I don't know if you guys can tell but they're not lined up very well. So we're gonna come back to that and we're gonna do the other side right now because then the camera crew can hold this side while I push on it. Yeah, okay. And that's one of the things that you'll run into sometimes when you build these planes is that you'll run into alignment issues. Now I'm gonna say, historically, FMS planes have been pretty good for this. We've had a couple that have been bad, but most have been good, okay? You don't need to hold that anymore. Okay. Okay, so we got these lights out, flaps and ailerons. But I do notice that this is, because this is an older design of a molding, it feels like we're gonna have alignment issues there. Or maybe there's like seven layers of paint on it, I don't know. Sometimes you just need like four hands. And yeah, it's just awkward. And honestly, that's one of the worst parts of filming these unbox build radio subs. But we know that a lot of you, especially new to the hobby, you need some help figuring out how to do this stuff. And honestly, that is, I think, where a lot of you get help. And I mean, I'm not just saying that because I'm assuming, I'm saying it because I've been told probably 10,000 times that we have actually helped get people started. Because once you're started, it's really not too hard. But if you don't know, if you don't have any basis for getting started, then it's really tough to kind of figure some of these things out. So don't feel bad. It's not like you're, you're dumb because nobody ever taught you how to do it. What's dumb is that it's, so much acronyms and crap that, you know, these manufacturers should spell out the acronyms more. Well, they just assume that you know so much. Okay. Hold here hard like you're trying to break it. Okay? Okay. Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push these in and they're wanting to not go in for some reason. Probably because that light cable is so dang short. I'm having to push, you see what I'm doing? I'm pushing the wire back into the wing and as the camera crew holds down, I'm allowed then to walk forward. Now, I'm just gonna say something right now. If you plan on taking this plane apart, don't. Because that is a pain in the boot. Boudoir. Get in there. Do you guys see what I'm fighting now? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so I'm holding the fuse now. Oh yeah, yeah we got it in the hole all the way. Okay, so good, deep, solid penetration. Camera crews continue to hold. Okay. Oh yeah, this one's going. It's going, I can already tell. Is it? Did I speak too soon? Or is it actually going? It's going. It's going. It's going, guys. Woohoo! So folks, if you haven't understood the perils of sticking it in the hole on camera, then YouTube is a dangerous world for you. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> But that being said, we have stuck many things in many holes on this channel for many years. Haven't even done it once in the woods yet. Arrgh! camera. Hopefully like seven out of 10,000 of you got that hilarious. Not 10,000 people watching this. 
10,000? Not at 59 minutes and 43 seconds. Oh yeah, there are, there's 10,000 left. Uh-oh. Good thing it's made of plastic and not carbon fiber. Also, don't put those in before you screw in your wing screws. Yeah, it's a lot harder to get your wing screws in. Ask us how we know. Is that what you remember from the first time? I certainly do remember that. I don't remember that. Uh, I remember it because you were using like the little provided Allen wrench before we used to use like real tools. Are you, okay, so funny story. Should I tell them the story? What? About the power lines. What about it? How we buried them and stuff. That's funny. No. It's just an expensive story. No. <laughs> the funny part was when we did the mall the first time. Oh. Should we tell them the story? A little behind the scenes. Yeah. Behind the scenes. If they're still here. Inside baseball. A minute and 34 seconds. If you're still here. Did you screw those in yet though? No. The wings? I was just, I was just going to say. So the first time we did the mall, I was flying along. Gorgeous flight. Gorgeous, gorgeous flight. And I accidentally totally creamed it into a, on one of my power lines. Yep. And we buried the power lines. So I got the last laugh. <laughs> I mean, it did cost 24 grand, so maybe they got the last the laugh. The power line's not the Yeah, plane. the power line's definitely got the last laugh. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, we, we were victorious in our efforts to avoid hitting that power line by taking it out of time and space. It's probably in Florida somewhere. Yeah, hold that please hard. I can't get this one started. It's really annoying. See what I'm doing, guys? I'm trying to get it started and it's not going. So here, here's what we're gonna do. Uncustomarily, we're gonna pause because what I wanna do is I wanna have camera crew come over here. She's gonna put her belly up against this and that way we don't break it. I'm gonna push hard on the opposing wing and then I'm gonna hold this in, but we can't film it because there's only two of us. So camera crew, ready to go. All right, so we got those two screws held. I had the camera crew do that and I pushed, I got the back one done and then I kind of took the wing and sort of pulled on this so I could collapse that closed and then get this one, okay? So it went just as expected and we're gonna get this other wing strut in. Pretty simple, good fit. Everything but the, the wing was a little bit tough to get in. That's not unusual to have a little bit of that issue. Um, that was not that hard. We've had planes where we have fought for literally hours. hours. Had to do surgery on the planes to make them fit. Mm -hmm. And that's called dynamo. <clears throat> yep. Anyway. All right, so normally you wouldn't put the prop on at this point if you're uh, afraid of things. So don't do that if you're concerned, okay? All right, so this goes back here. Looks good. Then the prop. It's kind of weird. They don't have anything to grab onto that. That seems strange to me. But I guess it is what it is. Okay, so I always try to go both ways to see which way it fits better. You can see it kind of wants to go up against there. I believe, I assume. And this nut is in the bag, okay? So I assume it's the same bag. Or excuse me, I assume it's the same as the others, except it's longer. Mm-hmm. Let's it, show you, in case you would mix them all up, you can see the longer one there. Yep, see? should be a 20 instead of a 16. <sighs> such authority. It's because I read the directions. Why well, you would do such a smart <laughs> thing like that? Because I'm a woman. Oh, what is a woman? I'm not a biologist here. This is not going in there. Okay, no, so not. I gotta get a cheap Chinese one. Uh, cheap Chinese one. Tool shop. It says here it's guaranteed cheap for as, life to fail. <laughs> cheap as you can get. Oh. oh. Man, the girth on that Chinese was huge. <laughs> 1.3 meter. Let's try that. 1.3 millimeter. Oh yeah, buddy. There it is. Okay, so we're just gonna twist this to our heart's content. The German wins. They're always right. How do you argue with that? Okay, so here we go. Spinner, slides on. Lots of rocket science involved. Now keep in mind, we're gonna be involving thrust reverse. And so if there were actually a time that I would suggest that you wait until you've vetted your system to put the prop on, this might be one of them if you plan to follow along our instructions. Now, I'm still not 100% certain we have thrust reverse they certainly won't talk about it in the manual, but I'll show you how to set it up if it exists. 
One more time, let's give them a look at this beautiful thing they can't buy. Amazing. You can buy all the stuff, you just... Yeah. Okay, look at that, amazing. Just buy like hundreds of planes and eventually they'll get one thing. This came if, out of an e-bike. If you two... You have to watch e-bikes. If you two keep oh, all yeah. your garbage, someday you keep can have... Keep it all. Someday you'll have the correct garbage holder. to make That's that cool thing work. Brian. See? Here we go. Screws? That's a lot of extra screws. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it's your floats. Yes, floats. Don't you know? Okay. So I'm just going to stick these all into a sack of delight. Okay. Ooh, this is a perfect time to show them our monstrosity antenna. Oh, it is. All right, come on outside. Oh, okay, we're going guys. Outside? Stick to the issues, people. Pump the brakes. We're going out. Oh, it's a beautiful day in spring in Iowa. Oh, gosh. It's cold, actually. Cold. Okay, so previously we were using Starlink and we still technically have Starlink, which Dishy McDish Space is up there. Wait, so oh, for wait. those of you that don't understand what it's like to be in the country, and then look, we have solar panels up there. Wow, environment, we love you. It's so delicate. Actually, we just don't like paying for electricity. <laughs> okay, here it is. Here it is. Look at this. Wow. That's beautiful. Okay, do this. Let me do this. Wow, look at all those ugly wires. Amazing. Waveform. Yep, that thing is $400. <laughs> That's right, $400. And then look at that beautiful install by yours truly. Into my closet, it's amazing. The camera didn't want me on camera, oh, sorry. You, yeah, thanks. We have to tell them why we have that. That's not so, the internet. I just want to tell you something about this. I know you guys are here for the mall. I'm sorry, just pump the brakes. You'll be fine, I promise. So this thing has, this is a multi, this is, what is this, a four? This is a four by four cross polarized Mimo outdoor panel antenna. And if you adjust this by one sixteenth of an inch up or down, it will cause you a 200 plus megabits per second penalty. Change. <laughs> so we spent like nine hours, and no, I'm not exaggerating, no. in weather, yes. trying to find the perfect spot. We were up on the roof, we were over there, we were over there, and we knew the approximate direction. By the way, show them the windy in the grass. It's so cool. I love this time I know. of year. I do. When you can see the grass telling you what the winds are doing. It no, is so it is cool. No flying. Yeah, so that's grass. We feed that to animals, and then you slaughter them, bleed them, cut them up, and make a beautiful, perfect steak. <laughs> I can't wait to embark in that. So anyway, if you guys didn't know how the ecosystem works, animals poop, poop turns to grass, you grass you feeds still the animal. You still explained the internet thing. <laughs> Who do you think you are, Al Gore? <laughs> so for those of you that didn't know, we now have better internet. It's still not quite as good as it could be, but when you live out in the country and you invest tons of money into a beautiful private RC runway and full-scale runway land for it and things like that, you still don't necessarily have internet. So when you get a quote for $63,000, that's not an exaggeration. Nope. To get fiber optics put to your house, then you say no. Yep. All right, so anyway, getting back to the point, I wanted to share that with you because it's kind of a cool thing. And so we're using T-Mobile home internet service and it's 5G and it is working good. Special thanks to Rami who didn't send us any money for it. <sighs> ah, we now appreciate we can, it. Now we can watch his videos and they won't that's buffer right. constantly. That's right, actually, truly, that is a good point. And same with ours. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. So much more to come. We're gonna stick in the receiver next and we already have it here in my fingers as you can see okay so what's our next step camera crew we have to set up the model on the transmitter booyah and you also notice that the only build portion that's not done uh, aside from the floats by the way if we do floats and i said this earlier i'm going to reiterate it again if we do floats we will showcase that probably in another video that's going to show taking off the landing gear putting on the floats okay and we would love, I mean, honestly, guys, what we're working on right now, large capital project for Brian Phillips RC is taking bids to put in a pond right there. I know you're thinking you're going to cut down trees to put in a pond. Yeah, I know. It like literally hurts to think about that yeah. uh, because we love those trees. We really do. But the problem is a lot of those trees are like this and they're going to die and they're falling into the ravine and we, we have, have a lot of erosion. erosion. Yeah. And so we're trying to control it and be good stewards and also make a place to run you know, RC boats like 100 miles an hour <laughs> for yes. the environment. Or electric. That's 
right. Okay. <laughs> so, time for radio setup on the NX10. All right, we're gonna power this thing on. We're gonna close that book. It's useless now to me. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, FMS A10 V2 Twin 70. That sounds like an awesome plane. I think a good one for a second thought. So. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so we're gonna go down to system setup. We're gonna go to yes. We're gonna go to model select and we're just gonna go whoop, just for a second and then scroll down to add new model. Okay. And then we're gonna create an acro. Sorry, we had an early release we couldn't share. Actually, we'll be filming another one after this too. Yeah. If the camera crew lets me survive. Yeah, you probably will. So it takes a little longer if you have 150 than if you have like two, okay? Just full disclosure. Uh, model type, this is where we're gonna, this is what we already set. If you change that, it's gonna blow out your model. Model name, this is where you type in the name. And this is uh, FMS 1500 millimeter mall. Okay, so as you can see, oh, and by the way, I'm using the legacy keyboard. Yours might look like a regular keyboard. I don't like that. So anyway, you can change that in system setup. Aircraft type, okay, so we need to set the aircraft type to uh, one aileron, one flap, and then a normal tail. And we should have a picture that's pretty good representation. And they have one with floats and one without, which would be, that's like a cub, but it's close enough. I think I'm gonna go with that. They don't have them all, do they? I don't think so. No, they don't. We'll do it with, with the wheels. Okay. And then we don't need a flight mode because we're not gonna mess with that. That would be something we would do if we were doing AS3X and safe. It's just a little easier on the AS3X safe setup. And so spoken flight mode, we don't need. And channel sign, I know that aux two, aux two would normally be assigned for flaps. And so I like to disassociate it from B. Okay, so now out to the regular screen. We're gonna scroll down dual rates and expo. We're gonna set that up right now. So on ailerons, I wanna tie everything to switch F. In my case, that's the way I do it. You don't have to, this is highly subjective. It just has to do with what you like the feel of your sticks to be. If you like it this way, then you can copy. If you don't like it this way, it's a good starting point. You don't have to do this by any means, okay? So we've got our regular, like highest, craziest rates. Then we have our starting point, which is 10 instead of five. And then this is 20 instead of 10 and dropping the rates down to 90. Okay, so this would be like our normal flight. This would be a more sensitive stick. This would be normal flight. That'd be a less sensitive stick. Okay, then we just emulate that for all three of the control axis, which would be pitch, roll, and yaw. So elevator, of course, would be for pitch. So you're up and down. And then we'll drop the rates down to 90. And that top setting. Okay, back to the normal takeoff mode. Or the normal starting mode, I should say. And then rudder, we're gonna do the same thing. This will be for yaw. So yaw meaning the flat turn, like if you're in a car sort of turn. Okay, there's 10. And then 20 with a rate of 90. There's nothing magical about these settings. If you like your sticks to be a little bit softer, then you could go with your middle starting point at 20 expo. And then your top setting, which would be like the, the most soft sticks, you could go to 40 and then you could drop the rates down to 70. You know, but it's just whatever you think is normal and correct in your application. Sometimes when I do a 3D plane, I will make the expo negative on the top, like negative 10%, which means that it's extra sensitive in the center. And then it goes back to normal once you get outside of the 10% of the band, okay? So then continuing on throttle cut, we wanna set that. Uh, it's set to switch inhibit. So we're gonna change it to switch H. Then we're gonna look down here on the screen, one of the most important safety features. Oops, see it changed it to throttle stick. That would not be a good choice for throttle cut. Highlight, ugh. Switch H, click to acknowledge, then test. See how it's working? Now it's gonna be throttle cut. Minus 100. Okay. Uh, flap system will set up in a second. Where's timer? Do we have timer yet? Do they suggest a timer? Nope. They don't? Okay, never. Never mind. Okay, so we're gonna go to, let's go to six and a half minutes. I think that's what we did before. We're gonna activate it with uh, throttle over 25%. That's a one out timer, I like to call that. 
means that when you break 25% threshold, it starts. At one minute, I want uh, nothing. And 20, wait, at one, one minute, minute, you want voice. I want voice, sorry. I want nothing at 20, and I want voice at 10 seconds. And at expiration, I want tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. Then telemetry, when we're not messing with bind, will put us where we need to be next, but we're gonna have to go to monitor mode so we can tell where to land all our cables. So if you look on here, it says bat. That'd be a great place to land your lights. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And if you look on the side here, real close, it says minus, plus, and then S. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. You can see the shadow Barely. of it. Yep. Yeah, it's just raised up. Wish a silk screen that'd be easier to see. So that means that your minus is down and your signal is up. Plus is always gonna be in the middle, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start landing the wires. It should be pretty straightforward. Now we have a Reflex V2 in here, which is a flight controller slash stabilizer, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna call it a stabilizer in this case because that's mostly what it is. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to get it wired up and we're gonna keep one of the channels free to actually plug in the S bus PPM mode and we're gonna set that, okay? So we'll go for elevator is on channel three. Okay. So channel three is right here. So it's a four set of pins. Okay, channel three. That's weird. The sicker doesn't line up very good. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's right. So one, two, three. Man, that doesn't line up at all with the sticker. No, it doesn't. That's weird. That's like really hard to line up. Okay, so anyway. Uh, rudder is on four, okay? And you're probably wondering, why do you not have this memorized well? Because some plane modes, uh, wing types make that change. I'm just gonna untangle the yellow throttle. That should be over here on channel one. And you're like, well, how, how are you remembering all this? It's right here on the screen. Throttle, aileron, elevator. So I'm just reading through as I need to. I'm looking away from the camera for a moment. Okay, so this one needs to go down. Let's slide this in here. You know what would be an awesome Mother's Day gift? Not filming. I no, mean... a paper shredder. <laughs> Maybe if you wouldn't have blown our other one up. I didn't blow it up. It blew itself up. It was like committed Harry Carry on it me. Did, it did. I don't even know what happened, but it was just like... It, it, it did not like its new home. It definitely didn't have thrust reverse. Probably wouldn't have broken if it did. <laughs> Think you could have backed out. There was thrust reverse on it, but it was not working. It was not. Okay, flaps are going to be on... Six. Sixer. So sixer. And then that means that channel five is kind of like open for whichever one we want to do with it. Okay, so normally channel five would be set up for gear. Now we don't have gear on this aircraft. And so for now, we're gonna go ahead and plug in this with the understanding that it's gonna eventually go to throttle reverse, okay? So we're gonna plug this in and that'll allow us to set the mode. Now, what mode do we want to set it to, camera crew? Stabilized. Stabilized, okay, good point. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna leave this hanging and dangling. We're gonna flip the plane over and set it on the plane stand because we can. Our elevator and rudder are not hooked up and we know that. And so long as you know that, you're fine doing this. What a beautiful plane, by the way. Mm -hmm. And when I, this is another plane, case in point, when you're new to the hobby, you may think, I don't like that plane. This would have been one of the planes I didn't like when I first started, but boy, I love it now. I think it's a beautiful plane. It's just or, so weird how your taste changes after you've flown like hundreds of planes. Or you think I have another like cub style plane, so why do I need this one? <sighs> and honestly, if you were gonna decide not to buy this plane, that'd be a good reason not to. If you have like six cubs and you've got a timber and you've got all the other choices that are similar, it may not be the plane for you. But I'm gonna tell you this, it's fast, it's furious, it's beautiful. And where this makes up for that the timber fails on is looks. Hmm, really? Yeah, it's got the scale looks, it's got the scale appearance. It's a little bit harder to fly. The timber is like easy to fly. Like anybody can fly it. It's super, super easy, super forgiving, but it's almost so easy it's boring, which I know some of you guys are gonna be like, yeah, I know what you're saying, Brian, I agree. Yes, I'm not saying it's a bad plane. I'm saying that it's just 
easy. And when planes are super easy, sometimes for guys that have a little bit more skill, they get kind of bored of that and they want something that's a little harder. That being said, I am one of those guys that might get a little bit bored, but I'm just gonna do crazy things. And so then it kind of becomes like a 3D weirdo, you know, that you don't actually fly like a general aviation plane. So that's where the timber comes in really good for float flying. Cause it's so capable, you can do crazy stuff with it, but you don't have to. And that's where I struggle is if you can, I tend to do it. And then it just sort of takes on a new life of its own. Leave it in the comments if you feel the same way about certain planes. Okay, so let's look inside here. We haven't even talked about the battery tray. This is one of the weaknesses of them all, okay? We have discussed this before in detail, right? You'll notice that I'm using new batteries, newer batteries that I haven't destroyed yet. I actually dropped this on the floor off camera when we were doing our little wing thing. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Look, that sucks. Soft packs, when you drop them and they hit the corner, you're just like, please don't catch on fire. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this aside. We'll use the damaged one. Oh, is that even gonna fit? Yes, it will. And you wanna know how? First of all, we're gonna undo the Velcro, okay? And then second of all, we're gonna pull that lead forward. Third of all, we're gonna pull this off. That helps. It gives us a little bit of extra movement room. This is where your limitations come in. But look at the size, guys. Look at the size. Oh, man. Yeah. So you can look at this as an, an advantage or a disadvantage. First of all, it's top load, okay? Now the Timber Evo is top load, but the previous Timbers won't, weren't. And you had to bottom load those. It was a pain, especially on a float plane. Like what the heck were they thinking? Everybody agreed, probably including Horizon, which is why they redid it. So anyway, what I'm gonna say is this. Top load with a tight fit is not a big problem for me because look what you do. It's done, it's in there, it isn't going anywhere right? Yeah, that thing's true. not coming out. Now, for, for the sake of our video, I just want to talk about a few things. Safety wise, normally we would take the Velcro and we would take and put some shelf liner, which by the way, let's show them the mother load. Where did you Wait, put it? No, it's not where, over there. Where is it? It doesn't fit in that drawer. Oh, okay. We'll, 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 we'll just show them. Where is it? It's in here. Can we show them? No. Well, she's going to reach, reach around quick. Oh yeah. See? Stuff is so awesome. Mother's Day gift extraordinaire. Get it for your mother and then use it yourself. Do not buy that for your mother. If you buy this for your mother. She will think you don't like her at No, all. buy this. What if she needs to line her shelves? I got gray. Is gray okay? Gray? Yeah. I don't know why you just get white. Because they didn't have white. It was like, they had like a weird corally color and then, I don't know. Well, black, anyway. I guess that'll do. Okay. So what is this stuff and why does it matter? It's okay. Shelf liner. What I do is I stick this onto the backside of the Velcro, the Velcro goes in and then you put your battery on there and it stops it from sliding around. And you're like, Brian, seriously, get mm -hmm. alive. No, seriously, it's amazing. It works really good. Just put Velcro in your plane, Brian. Okay, yeah, that's one good point. But here's what happens when you have Velcro, okay? You put the Velcro here, right? Well, no, it kind of needs to be on this plane. It needs to be there. Oh, what battery is that again? What battery is that? Hey, yeah. somebody, could you tell me what size that is? Hmm? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah, you could take a marker out and mark it, but you just covered up your whole safety label. And then also, the only way to know, because this is a smart battery and it has the data lead, is to plug it into the charger. Now, again, not like you can't tell or you can't figure it out and you can't generally tell from the size, but at the end of the day, I hate covering up that label. And it's always on the wrong side because then the plane needs it there. Okay, then the plane needs it there. And so the next thing you know, your whole thing is covered with Velcro. Now, yes, I get it. We have a lot of planes. We fly at a lot of different battery locations. Some of you guys might not do that. And so you may not have that same problem, but you'll get there eventually, just wait longer. Okay, all right, so you also notice it says an XT60, and this is the ultra cheap variety. That's weird. I wonder why they went the ultra, ultra cheap. cheap. Yep, you can tell. Look at the ultra cheap. Yeah. How can you tell it's ultra cheap? Because you can see through it. It's cheap plastic. Yeah. Okay, so these are the type of details that we point out that they probably don't want us to point out and we don't care because we serve you in the flight community, not them, even though they probably think we serve them because we help sell some planes for them or whatever, I don't know. We just want you guys to know what you're getting when you buy it and not a, a load of BS from the marketing departments, even though we're probably part of their marketing department. So there you go. All right, here we go, guys. We have a plug, we could stick it in if we wanted to and we'd be in good conscience be able to do that, even though look where my hand is. This is yet another reason why you wouldn't install the prop. Now let's talk about what I'm gonna do to keep myself safe. A, we're gonna pray a little bit off camera. B, I have my 
throttle cut on, which really doesn't do anything on a malfunctioning ESC, just to be totally clear. And C, I'm gonna trap the prop. Now, if you've ever known anything about ESCs, one thing that they don't do well is they don't create torque from nothing, okay? If you have this thing braced, it's less likely to cut you if it's small. Okay, some of you are screaming at the screen, hey, I've been to the hospital, that's not true. Yeah, I've, I've seen it both ways. You know, if you pull your hand away the right way, you won't get cut. But if that thing starts spinning, it would be the first time I've ever had it happen with hundreds, if not thousands of planes. I'm not exaggerating. I'm telling the truth because I want you guys to be safe. If you're in any doubt, don't plug it in. Usually my rule of thumb is vet the plane. If you trust it, you're gonna be in here putting this battery in at the next flight. You're not gonna stand there and be super careful for the rest of your life, okay? So the other thing you can do is you can try to reach around like this. You notice on a plane stand, we have clearance for the prop. If the thing would start running, worst case scenario, I have to wait for this and I'm like pooping my pants the whole time, trying to slide my hands back to get out of the way. It's gonna suck, plus a new change of drawers. <laughs> so I have my transmitter here in close proximity. I have a spotter, also known as a camera crew. She knows how to use the pause button, but she'd probably film it. Probably. So here we go. I'll help you. You guys ready? Maybe. So that's my plan. Now we're not even in bind mode because there is no bind plug on an AR620. You have to press the button. So it's back there hanging out of the bottom, okay? So watch what happens. Watch this. Everybody ready? Call the hospital. Ready? Okay, okay get, the, get the bed ready. Oh my goodness. I've lived so far. Oh, sweet landing lights. Listening to the beeps. Getting myself into a secure location. If the thing would start taking off, I would then be like, I would be able to respond to it. Now, are you gonna go and accidentally pass through the, th the, the place where the prop is spinning? It's possible if you're really not careful. So you can either be careful or you can leave the prop off. Make a choice. All right, so throttle cut is on, throttle sticks down. I'm gonna press this button right here. It's flashing, it says bind mode, okay? Good. Now I'm gonna get this plane secured. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna scroll down to bind. I'm gonna bind. Light goes off. We never set up flaps. Correct. Did you notice that that aileron didn't move? I did not. It's not moving. I do notice that now. It's not moving. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have to figure out what we did wrong or what is wrong, okay? So that's an important thing to look at. Elevator and rudder are not hooked up. We know that throttle is the only thing we care about yet because we're gonna prove that and then we're gonna move on with life. Throttle cut is on. Throttle stick is at 0%. I'm gonna move it up slowly. It's at 100%. That'd be a dangerous spot if the throttle cut wasn't on. Throttle cut is now off. Throttle is at 0%. Throttle cuts off. There's your throttle, okay? Everything's working fine. Throttle cut is on and tested, meaning that I have moved the stick up and down. Now I trust this ESC, I trust this motor to not cut me when I'm installing the battery. So at this point, we can go ahead and just tuck this away and we're gonna just leave it plugged in for the moment because we have to do some setup. And in order to do setup, we need to flip the plane around. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this in here. Looks absolutely gorgeous, really nice finish. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this plane around and we're gonna finish up the rest of the setup. Now we do need to address why the aileron didn't move. This is what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We show planes in their natural habitat, which is screwing up. So we're gonna teach you how to unscrew it with thrust reverse. So also, sorry, that was out of place. Okay, so we're gonna click. We're gonna go into throttle or flat setup. We're gonna turn it on. We're gonna set it to switch B. Probably here. Now we can just look. Oh yeah, we'll just bring it all the way up to minus 100. And you're like, but Brian, it's not all the way up. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. Okay, now full landing flaps. <laughs> Some barn doors there, okay, sweet. Then we're gonna set it to two seconds of a deployment speed. Oh yeah. Nice. Very nice. And then we're gonna set up our elevator correction to like six and nine. 10. Now, in order to get the flaps totally retracted, look where they are. See how they're not lined up here? Mm -hmm. I am highlighting this and I'm gonna scroll until they're lined up. Oh yeah, buddy. Yeah. That's nice. good. So we went to 125, okay? So there's takeoff and landing. 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk back down to flap system. We're gonna go to the uh, takeoff position because I don't want quite half flaps. I want more like, I want more like that. You guys see that? Okay, so takeoff flaps, landing flaps for barn doors, okay? Maybe I'll do a little bit more for takeoff flaps. Let's do 40, okay? So there's takeoff flaps and then landing flaps. Those are huge flaps, yeah, like that's are. a lot of deployment. We might have too much. So anyway, so the flaps are set up, they're settled. Ailerons are still only working halfway. That's a problem, we'll figure that out. Elevator is not working because it's not hooked up. Rudder's not working, but that is. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> okay. Whoa. So we either plug something in wrong or something is set up wrong. Let's find out which one, okay? So first things first, we're going to carefully flip the plane over. Time for some surgery. So you know what you did that was weird? You plugged that Y cable into the rudder to plug the lights in? We're in auto leveling mode. We also just figured that out. Normally, we would talk about this later. We have two functions we need to fix right away before we forget. One, ailerons are not both working, but once you get to halfway, this one's also moving. Is it? Nope, it is okay. Not. So you see how this is moving, guys? That means we're in auto leveling. That's mode is gonna set that. My gear switch, watch this. It's gonna stop doing this. When I get to level, it's gonna find the quickest route to level. Now it's not, but it's stabilizing, okay? So what I want to do is I want to lock it in stabilized mode and then I want to shut that connection out. So S bus PPM, bye bye. You never get plugged in again. See you later, buddy. Thrust reverse is something that we'll eventually have control over and I'll show you exactly how to do it. But we're going to, for now, we're going to plug it in. We're going to secure the plane with my, with my forearms. We're plugging this into the signal line only. Okay. So the signal line only. So real quick, I flipped the switch on accident. Throttle cuts off. Regular thrust. Reverse thrust. Look at your flowers. Okay. Reverse thrust, you hear the beep. Throttle cuts on, full throttle. Thrust reverses on, full throttle. It doesn't know because it's all part of the sequence, okay? We'll teach you how to change that from this switch, which is gear, to G where I usually put my thrust reverse. So for instance, when we set up a plane like this, this one just so happens not to have thrust reverse, I would set this for normal flight mode forward, thrust reverse controllable, as in wherever the stick is, it goes, and then pilot fatigue full on thrust reverse. The reason we would do a pilot fatigue mode is because these are EDFs that are centrally located and they're safe. You're not gonna accidentally chop your hand off with it. But on an open prop like this, a tractor prop to sign, we're not gonna do that because it could be dangerous. Now, we're gonna come back to the ailerons just so we can get the thrust reverse set up since we started talking about it. If you're, used to, if, if you're new to this and you're like, hey, you're jumping around, get used to it. That's what happens when you do these planes. So if you can't figure out how to jump around, you're gonna do bad in this hobby. You need to take some time, watch the video, step around a few times, okay? All right, so clearing the timer, we're gonna go in here to channel sign. So system setup, disconnect, disconnect RF. So currently channel A is controlling gear, or switch A is controlling channel five, which is also known as the standard gear channel on spectrum, okay? We're gonna change that over to switch D. You can scroll or you can just move the switch, okay? So we're gonna leave it on G. We're gonna walk out. Now what I wanna do is I wanna control the direction Let's go to, let's just do monitor mode real quick and we'll show you. Okay, so throttle cuts on, so you're gonna see it's gonna not do anything because it's not moving. Now I need to control the plane. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off throttle cut and just show you, okay, so we're in. Thrust reverse. Now. Now it's forward thrust. Throttle cuts on. Let's take note of what position this is in. So this is gonna be our switch G, which is controlling gear, okay? So when that gear is at minus 100, it's going in forward thrust. That is gonna be whatever, it's gonna float. That's dangerous, you don't want it in the middle. You want it locked high or locked low. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So I need to flip the direction of the output of this, or, and in my case, if you have a less sophisticated radio, you can just flip the direction. 
In my case, I don't want that middle position. That could be a dangerous condition because you don't know if it's gonna be forward or reverse, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click, we're gonna scroll down to digital switch setup. Then we're gonna select the switch by moving it. Now in switch zero, switch zero is indicated by this. It says zero is that direction. Two is that direction. One is neutral in the center, okay? So switch zero is gonna be minus 100 like it was on number two, position number two. Okay. We're just scrolling that all the way to minus 100. We're gonna mimic the position that it was in when it went, the, when it went forward. Then we're gonna mimic the position opposite that. I want thrust reverse, which is plus 100. I've always thought that was counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna put this to plus 100. And then you're not ever in the middle. You don't ever wanna leave a control on a pulse width modulation in the center if you don't know what condition you're gonna get because it will be somewhat random, okay? So there's minus 100, 100, and plus 100. So we have minus 100, 100, and 100, right? So now what's that gonna manifest? Let's look in the monitor mode. So scroll one over and just watch what happens when you move the switch. Plus 100, plus 100, plus 100, minus 100. So there's forward thrust, which is minus 100. This would be a reverse, this would be a reverse. Okay, now I'm gonna demonstrate by shutting off the throttle cut. We're gonna have forward thrust. Yep. And then we're gonna have reverse thrust and also containing, continuing to be a reverse thrust. Okay, now back to forward thrust, throttle cuts on. Okay, does that make sense everybody? Mm -hmm. If you don't know how to do it, go back, watch that video a couple times and uh, hopefully we'll help you get it figured out. Okay, there are, that's a lot of steps in a short period of time. So we try to go at a brisk pace when we're actually doing things and then otherwise just take as long as it takes. And you can always rewatch re or slow it down. Yep. Click the little Click gear, the little gear slow in the settings and you can go slower or you can go faster. And if you're new and thrust reverse scares you, just don't use it. Don't yet. use thrust reverse. If you don't know what you're doing, just hold off on it for a while. Yeah. It's a good tool for people that know what they're doing. It's a bad tool for people that don't. Let's figure out what we did wrong or what they did wrong. My guess is they did it wrong. I don't think we messed up. Or they labeled it wrong. Yeah. Okay, so everybody, camera crew is gonna come around to my other side. I think she'll be able to see better. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about what's actually happening. Elevator is moving the elevator. That is not the rudder, okay? So probably what happened is they plugged something in wrong. That says rudder. This says rudder. This says Lights, hmm, weird. Lights definitely go out and look at the lights. This is troubleshooting 101. We're trying to figure out information. Okay, so that's one of the lights. Yep. This is the other light, almost certainly. No, it's not. That's an aileron. They get the label wrong. Okie dokie. Ooh, that's scary. Um, all right, so I gotta think for a second. So come around. Now watch. That's an aileron. That is the rudder. That is the elevator. They're separate now. Okay. But guess what's not happening? The lights, it's actually not the lights, is one of the other conditions. Flaps we already know is correct, okay? That's what they claim to be the rudder. I believe that's true. The lights are okay still. We haven't lost the light yet which means it's still plugged into the aileron port, okay? Now ailerons go back here, and there's one plugged in here. Yep, there's the ailerons, okay guys? So one of these was mislabeled. That's the one that goes to this one, it's correct. And I'm just chasing back where the wires come out. Okay, there's the other one. As you can see, it's labeled aileron. Watch the light, it's gonna mm -hmm. shut off, watch. How do I know this? Process elimination. Yep. Huge, huge. If that was a full scale plane, people would have died. Except not. And see, that's what's so stupid is guys, these, these hobby plane, these hobby companies, they build some amazing aircraft and they very often don't make big mistakes like that, but that was kind of a big mistake. Nobody died, we caught it. Guess what? Whose responsibility it is to check this? That'd be you. Camera crew. Lights, you ready? Lights, camera action. So folks, all you gotta do is just go back and use the process of elimination. And you're like, yeah, but Brian, you, you know how to do that stuff, I don't. Well, that's why you're watching this video. 
And what you should do is just remember, every time you watch a video, you learn a little something new. Ailerons are moving. Elevator is moving, but not hooked up. Rudder's moving, but not hooked up. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. By the way, pet peeve of mine. Pet peeve of mine. People still mm. being healthy. No, when people get on and they say, hey, I'm a brand new pilot, I did it my way, and then it's not working. Guys, when you're new, if you need help, try to do it the way of the helper. And that means if you're at your local flying club and you get some dude that's willing to invest in you, take advantage. Just learn, learn his way, you know, work in your own stuff once you get enough skill to get on your own, okay? We do some basic stuff here, but it's really hard for the helper to help you if you're like mixing in three or four different helpers, okay? Cause like, I don't know what the heck they're doing. I don't know in context like you would. Okay, so just take that for what it's worth. It's just difficult to help somebody that's getting help from four or five different people on the same thing, okay? And by the way, that is something we do different here on Brian Phillips RC than our competitive offerings on YouTube, okay? There are other people that do a better job of reviewing these things, but at the end of the day, what we do and what we like to do is we like to show you a step-by-step, -step, exhaustive build with almost every product we do, unless it's a car, because we've just gotten to the point where they're just like so easy, you open them up, they run. But with airplanes, there's a lot of things that come up like that, and it could be devastating. If you try to take off with that, you'd be crashed. Yep. I don't care how good a pilot you are, you nope. are gonna crash, okay? And how easy was that? Put the label here. Nope, wrong label here. That's literally the mistake that would have cost this plane. We caught it. You can now catch it because you know what to look for. But if you're a returning pilot, you would have seen that from a mile away. I mean, you would have noticed like, why the heck is the rudder moving when I move the, I mean, this is now a Flex Innovations receiver and an Aura 8, like that thing over there. But what you're gonna get here on Brian Phillips RC is you're gonna get an exhaustive build. We're gonna show you what got screwed up. We're gonna show you when these things don't fit well. We're gonna show you when the colors don't match. We're gonna show you how beautiful it is in the air. We're gonna show you how good it can look, at, at least to the best within my abilities. We're gonna show you you know, how it looks up against something else in a similar condition, instead of like, you know, here or there or whatever, just doing different things all the time, okay? I want you guys to be able to know, hey, for some of you guys, this is gonna be very expensive. It's gonna be like maxing out your budget. We wanna know that you're gonna be happy with what you get. And if you see what we got, and you're like, hey, I can tolerate that little, you know, goof up on the aileron versus the lights, like big deal, I'll figure it out, it's no big deal. Good, then you know what you're gonna get. But just remember, quality control at these factories in China, that, that gets missed, okay? <laughs> if I was making them, it'd get missed. All right, so getting back full, full, full circle. Now, we have to finish where we left off, which is vetting control surface direction, vetting the control correction for stabilizer, okay? Mm -hmm. We've already locked stabilizer on. We've already set up thrust reverse and tested it. We've set up flaps and tested them. So we're almost done. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, cable management. <laughs> that was cable your best management. Work. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I know. I knew you would be. Boop. Boop. There it is. Cable management. It's number one way to success, guys. All right, so let's talk about this. What do we what do we do when we're doing control surfaces? What do we do? We flip it over. Oh. Sorry, we bad. flip it over. Why do we flip it over? So that we can see. So that you want to be so, sitting in the right direction so that you can yeah, see. Yeah, because it's it confusing. Otherwise, yeah. that thing looks awesome. Don't make yourself try and think backwards. Yeah. And don't do math on camera, no. we've learned. Yes. Don't do oh, we need, to, we need to connect the rudder and elevator. Now, Yeah. come around here. We have a rudder and elevator that are loose still. Now, why are they loose? Because we needed to figure out if we were in, ele if we were in auto leveling mode or if we were in... Stabilized. Stabilized. Mm, so good, so cool. If you guys don't watch Rami, that's what he says all the time. So hopefully you guys connected the dots. I'm sure you did. Okay, here we go. Mansplaining things again. It's a Mother's Day special. Brian mansplains something unlike usual. <laughs> oh, what kind of a fool didn't do that? Me. Oh. We have to put a screw in there. They didn't even give us one single screw. That's it, nuts, they always give extras. 
No. Back to the dump. There is one. One of the little ones. I know there's one. But they didn't give us an extra. Oh, not extra. It's very unusual for FMS to not give extras. Sometimes those little teenies. Are they tightening? Are they sharpening the pencil? They've been watching too much Brian Phillips, Cersei. They're like, oh, they don't use extras. We take them out now. Right there. There it is. Okay. Sweet. It's already so, going. folks, if you aren't familiar with FMS, FMS customarily always gives you extra screws. Mm -hmm. Let's get a load of oh, that. Oh, you that is just so forgot gorgeous. so that you could use your garbage holder again. What are you talking about? This is amazing. All right, I'm going to grab the screwdriver. Um, this is going to be a Phillips Chinese number one of a kind. Okay, just throw that anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a screw in th through here. Oh, you know what? We actually might need one of those machine bolts. I honestly can't tell, hon. I don't know. I think it's this one. I could, if I'm mistaken, guys, I apologize. I'm going to see what happens. And then if it's wrong, then I apologize in advance. That seems. That seems right. Accurate. Yeah, it seems good. I mean, it's pretty good penetration. It's going to hold it. All right, so folks, um, if you didn't connect the dots to what just happened there, I forgot to put this screw in. So my apologies. It should have been done, but it's done now, so. All right, so this goes into the bottom hole. So you want this thing to be level. And if you haven't already worked your elevator a little bit, work your elevator a few times. Make sure it's smooth and doesn't have some binding, okay? So now what I need to do is I have to hold this. It's honestly easier if you could use a needle nose plier but you don't have to have a needle nose flyer, a pair of strippers, you know, something else. But you see how far that is? That little uh, shaft needs to go in the middle of the hole. Okay, so I'm gonna spin this, I'm gonna spin this, getting close, I'm gonna spin this, getting close. I'm gonna spin this, yeah, that's really darn close because it's, ooh, it's not level though. Not quite level. So, oh yeah, I gotta go two more at least. There's one more half and then two more halves. So the expression, when I talk about halves, I'm talking about half turns, okay? So there's half a turn. And so for those of you that don't know this, I work on industrial scales for a living and we turn trim pots to adjust the uh, sectional adjustments on truck scales and railroad scales and floor scales and all sorts of different scales that measure things like the weights of things. And so I always express myself in quarters or halves of turns oh, so that's not gonna it's not enough i know oh, okay but what i was gonna say is um the reason i do that is because i find it more easy to break it down to the adjustment sizes so like in this case you can only be half or half you can't be like you know quarters so i'm not going to count in quarters but if i had a different clamping mechanism that allowed me to be in quarter increments then i would count in quarters okay so if you ever hear me counting you're like what the heck are you counting brian you'll understand so there you go you can see elevator up elevator down yeah, it's a little bit high, actually. I feel like that's probably better than being... The next step out is going to be way low. Yeah. Because I feel like since this is a tricycle, we're going to have to engage... We're going to have to go nose down a little bit anyway just to get it off the ground. We'll see. Sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we're right. You kind of get lucky on them once in a while. And then you take this little fuel tube and you just slide it back. And you want to usually get it back just a hair... So you have free clearance there as you move your elevator, okay? All right, good. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the rudder, but see on the rudder, we're gonna look at this place here. And so, because you can't really compare this, it's hard to see. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fingers, your thumb and your middle finger, your forefinger, and you're gonna hold right there. And that's gonna give you a perfect alignment, okay? So now what you have to do is you have to take and get this so that it goes all the way down into there. So which is gonna be like a ton of turns. Sheesh. Yeah. I agree. And if you ever get one that you run out of turns on, you have to undo this screw and move the linkage, but you can't usually do that on an elevator because you need up and down, okay? So here's half. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Good Lord. Getting kind of awkward. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's try. Holy crap. Are you serious? Like we're way, way, way far off. Okay, I'm gonna have to like go all the way in here. I wonder if it'd be easier on this one, just cause I know I have to go like a million miles. I'm gonna, I like never take do that. Take it off and turn it. I'm gonna take it off and I can hold the zigzag there. The Z-bend or the what, what are they called? Z-bend. 
I think that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. See now, if you get these crappy kind, you can't snap these and unsnap them. These ones are okay. You can always tell because they're really brittle. And when they're brittle, they'll break the tip of the dingling off. And I mean, it like breaks right off. Like you get no warning, it just pops right off. You get one poke if you're lucky and then it's just gone. Oh, look, what? a bird. Look at the bird. Let's get the people a bird. Oh. oh. That was cool. Just a bit. Was that an oral? It was an oral. So we have orals that are getting on our bird feeders. If you guys like birds, you probably like orals. Lots of birds. Birds. Okay, so into the second hole in. We already did that earlier. Sorry, folks, for having to redo that. Oh, yeah, we're there. We're there. We got to go out oh, some now. Close. Good. Okay, so we're going to go one half, two halves, three halves, four, and I bet we're good. No, we are not good. We have to go another. There's five halves and then six halves. And then I'm just going to hold this here. Ooh, that's close. Probably another one out, and that's maybe as close as we're going to be able to get it. Yeah, that's pretty close. So there you have it, guys. So this plane, the mall, pretty easy to build. Um, the hardest part about this plane is not pronouncing the E and looking like an idiot <laughs> like me. I did that the first time we reviewed it. And then people very quickly corrected me, as you're so good about doing on YouTube. And so thank you if you're one of those people that cares so much about us that you don't want us to realize our fly was undone. Rudder left, rudder right, elevator up, elevator down. Roll left, roll right. Yeah, that's backward, okay? Now, that could be a function of having our Y cable flipped, okay? Just full disclosure, watch this. Click, servo setup, travel to reverse, aileron. Roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, yaw right. Take off flaps, landing flaps. Throttle cuts off. <laughs> That's powerful. Thrust reverse. You didn't like those flowers, did you? See, aren't you glad I left those there now? Okay. So throttle cuts on. Now, throttle cuts on and tested. Note the nav lights. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Green. Very bright. Red. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to flip this on its back and we're going to look at correction elevator, or excuse me, the, well, do we have damage on here? I don't think we did that. Hmm. That got squished. Okay, that's a bummer. Okay, so aileron up, it goes up, it goes down. Elevator up, it goes up, it goes down. Rudder left, or right, excuse me, left. Yep, I can see it. I'll hold the camera for this one. All right, so guys, if you look down here at the rudder, rudder goes right, rudder goes right, Rudder goes left. <laughs> elevator goes up, elevator goes down. Okay, hard to see that one, but it is happening. I'm gonna brace you up against the tire, the rock hard tire. Either on up, either on down. Okay. Either on up, either on down. Okay. So what you're looking for, guys, is pretty straightforward. You wanna see opposite of the impact of the environment. You are simulating the environment of wind smacking your plane down. See? Moving, moving, moving. And if it moves the same direction, guess what's going to happen? When the environment comes up and pushes you, you're going to go further than you would have otherwise. And it will keep accelerating in an infinite loop until it runs out of thr uh, the throw. Okay? All right. So, elevator. Up and down, roll left, roll right, yaw left, yaw right. All right, folks, there you have it. Now you know the full story. Mmm, that's good. So, timer set, throttle cut set, thrust reverse is set, flaps are set, no gear, doesn't matter now, because it's not tied to anything. We're going to verify that real quick. Sorry. Flaps, gear. So it just doesn't change anything, but this does, okay? So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll do our best to get to you. And really, in the meantime, if you wanna to get to us for comments and questions, the best thing that's been working for people lately 
is Patreon. Yes, I understand that costs a few bucks or a buck or whatever it is that you guys, there's levels. So, but it's a monthly support thing. It just so happens that we see them. It's not that we don't do comments anymore. We just can't keep up with them. We're trying our best and we just came to the conclusion one day that we cannot keep up. And we were trying so bad and we were doing 100% of comments and it was awesome. And I love interacting with you guys in the audience. It's like one of my favorite things to do, but I was spending days and we were like not able to make footage and I was getting behind on other things and it was just like, we it's can't. It's a lot of family time. Yeah, lots of family time. So it's already bad enough when you do as much footage as we do as the camera crew fully knows. And so our apologies for that. We do see them. We do reply to them as best we can. And so if you wanna get to us on just the regular comments, try to do it on the first couple of days. We do have a comment tool in YouTube as a creator that allows us to watch the comments separate from the video. So like if you ask me a question and it's not in context for me, I won't know how to answer. Like, hey, where was the CG? Where was this? Speaking of CG, let's talk about CG, okay? Hey, I have a comment on comments though. Yeah. Because if people reply, if you, if Brian replies to your comment and then you ask a follow-up question. I don't see it. Unless you tag him, we don't see the follow-up questions. Yeah, it's not that we're not, it's not that we're trying to ignore you or we're disinterested. We literally don't see them. We would have to click through every video and look at every comment to see the reply. So just- Because we filter with re response status. Yeah, so it, just it tag be him like and then we'll see it again. So we forgot to mark the CG, so we're gonna do that right now. The CG on this plane, it's not like an, you know- Super critical. Well, it's critical on every plane, but some planes it seems to be like less of an issue. The reason I say is because we can't hardly move the battery. Okay. Yeah, that's true. So 60 so to 70. So we're 60 to 70. So getting, getting back to the comments as we get our caliper set to 60 to 70. Okay, 60 to 70, and we want to mark it where? On the bottom. On the bottom. So we're going to flip this over and go right where the camera crew is because the plane stand happens to live down oh, here right on. now. Yep. And so we really appreciate you guys supporting us on Patreon because it gives us another way to connect with you. I think we're up to like 40 or so yeah, Patreon. So. so it's a very small part of our you know, income and earnings on YouTube. And so that's not really our primary focus on Patreon, but if you want to support us and you can't buy planes from us uh, through the links, then that's another good way to do it. And we have PayPal, if it's just kind of like a one-time thing, you don't want to give up that, you know, guaranteed like $1 a month or whatever it is. Um, I think that's the minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like 60. And by the way, Patreon has crazy fees. So anybody who, came up with Patreon, those guys are filthy, filthy, filthy rich. And they're taking like 20%, I think. Yeah, it's a lot. On the cheap. It's crazy, but whatever, what are you gonna do? Um, all right, so we're gonna come out here. We don't say that to guilt anybody, by the way, we just want you to be um, aware of how things are, you know, where they go. Okay, so then we're gonna take, and we're at, you know, 60 here, then we're gonna go to 70. So the best way, to support us financially if you don't want to buy planes is to use yeah, um, friend on PayPal. Friends and family on pay PayPal. Because then you can send us money and it's like it's not like a business transaction per se. Uh, so there's no returns on friends and families. So it's for friends and families, just like oh, we are. Thank you. So it works out perfectly. Mm -hmm. But then you can avoid all those ridiculous fees. So even if you follow that like donate thing or whatever, mm -hmm. they still charge like I think they're like five or six percent. It's crazy. So anyway, guys, the only reason we tell you this inside baseball stuff is because we know that you care about us. If you're watching a video this long, you obviously care about us. And so we want you to understand kind of how things work so that you can help us to work in the system that we're part of. And the best way you can support us is by watching, liking, subscribing, clicking the bell for notifications so that you get notified. It does help us on the algorithm because we do long format content. We get punished big time. If we just did shorts all day, it would be so much easier for Megan and I. I mean, we could just, we could make like 20 shorts in like an hour. We just made a video that was like three hours long. It's only two. Only two. Well, we're gonna spend about three and a half hours in getting this video ready. Yeah. So there's a six hour commitment on this video and then the flight. So imagine how long it takes to like hold it here and just chuckle a few times and open the landing gear. Seconds, okay. So anyway, we try not to do that. I mean, we still do that stuff once in a while just because it's the thing that's fun to do, okay? On the front hole, we're just eh, pretty much there. On the back hole, we're just a little bit nose heavy. So right in the middle, I mean, we are literally perfect. That's good. So 
3200 four ass is a perfect fit in here for CG. And you also notice there's braking. It's not obnoxious at all. Feel it. You feel well, it is weird. the pulse? Yeah. You know why it pulses? Because it's going to the next. That's the size of the magnetic yeah. coils. Okay, so anyway, getting back to the point, guys, we really appreciate you, world's best audience on YouTube here at Brian Phillips RC. If you want to help support us, buy these planes from the links in the video description below. You'll help us to support the ecosystem of RC by doing so, because then we tell these guys that, hey, send us more airplanes so we can make more videos, help teach you. In return, you buy the things from them. They send us some commissions, keeps us in business, and then everybody wins. But at the end of the day, we don't pull any punches. We tell you the way that they are. But that's that's part of the way it is. You know, like you can buy anything online these days. And sometimes you buy stuff online and you regret it. We want to help avoid the regret because for us, it's not just a little bit of regret. You buy the wrong plane at the wrong time, you could hurt yourself, you could hurt somebody else, you could catch a lipo on fire. You know, you could actually, you know, damage somebody's house or hurt somebody else. It's 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 really uncommon, but it does it does happen. So you need to be careful. I'm not Mr. Nanny State here. You guys are big boys and girls. You can figure it out yourself how to be safe and how to be careful. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I am trying to say is we need people that are getting into this hobby for the long run. Speaking of things that we want to point out that are screwed up, that light is perfect and it's blinding, which is ideal. This light is imperfect. Look at that. That is so weird. You see that? It's like they didn't cut the paint out. Uh -uh, all the way. Huh, okay. You see what I'm doing with my thumbnail? Yeah. Look at that, folks. Wow, what a difference. I just noticed that as we were talking. That's working really good too, actually. That was bizarre. Wow, they, oh, so they masked it off. So they took and jigged the model and they just masked over Missed. it, but they didn't get their masking right. Yeah. So that made a big improvement and yeah. look at the difference in color. Yeah, they are a little bit. That's warmer mm -hmm. than this one. That's weird. So that's like two points. This one's like 3K and this one's like 2.7K. So that's so anyway, guys, we love doing this stuff for you. <laughs> There's so many details that we can share in every video. We try to share the things that are most pertinent and I know we missed some things. So that's where the comments come in handy is you can leave us comments and ask questions. Um, and that's kind of where we got into the whole Patreon PayPal thing for years. We didn't do the PayPal thing. Um, it's not like our mainstay. Our mainstay is basically bringing you content that helps deliver sales that helps to keep us in business. That's where the bulk of our income comes from on the YouTube channel. The ad revenue is there. It's just like some but it's, it's not a big chunk of it, really. Uh, what we wanna do is we wanna bring you good stuff so that people will reward the good companies that are making good stuff for us. And that's part of the reason why when we reach out to some of these companies, they don't wanna work with us because they know we're gonna tell the truth. And sometimes the truth is kind of painful, especially in the pocketbook of the companies making these planes. Because what they're gonna do is they're gonna go to China, they're gonna get a bid from some Chinese company. They're gonna say, hey, we want this, this, and this. And they're gonna be like, well, hey, don't you want flaps? Don't you want LEDs? Don't you want lights? Don't you want this? Don't you want that? They're gonna be like, nah, we wanna hit this price point. And they're, they're targeting this price point, right? And, and you're in this price point, or you're in this price point. And they miss it. And so what happens? They go out of business, okay? So instead of, you know, like, hey, let's make a, let's make a model that's gonna, that's gonna reach a bigger audience, that's gonna satisfy these people, but it's still cheap enough they can afford it, they end up trying to, you know, they just pick the wrong features. And that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to help the manufacturers to understand what we really want as foam pilots, let's call us, you know, we're not, you know, going to be putting out a sophisticated turbine system. Believe me, I would love to do that, but it's just not in our budget. It's not in our lifestyle right now to be doing that stuff. Cause you know, you're talking 20,000, $30,000 for some of these planes. So this is what we do and we love it. And we're trying to reach an audience. That's people that are just getting back into the hobby that have been on the sidelines for 20 years because their kids are growing up or whatever. They had a, you know, an injury or too busy at work and their career's backed off, they're retiring, whatever it is, just coming back. Or we get these people that are like, you know, I've never done it before and I really wanna do it. You know, I love aviation, I've loved it for a lifetime and I wanna pull the trigger finally. We're here to help you get in the air and we're here to get you back in the air and that's what we need because we need to grow and expand the hobby so that we can A, drive down the prices, admittedly, B, get the vendors and merchants and hobby shops and companies that are doing good stuff to get good clout with market because they're gonna grow and perpetuate the good stuff that we want, okay? 
Now, that being said, yes, there's still things that we'd like to improve on, like these rock hard tires. These things are rocks, by the way. Yeah, they are. Okay. But they may or may not be a problem. I don't know. We'll see that in the video. And we're going to tell you that when we fly it. So we're not going to hold, hold any punches. We're not going to pull any punches on that stuff. And also, like when the lights and the ailerons get flipped, look how, how big of a deal that would be if you're a brand new pilot. If you're an experienced pilot, chime in here. Let us know in the comments. Have you seen it before? A, it's a big deal. B, we don't want one and dones. We want people that are in the hobby. If you're serious enough to go out and spend six, 700 bucks on a plane, because that's what it costs to get in the first time. If you're buying this plane, you're going to be in it for like six, 700 bucks. You're going to have a battery. You're going to have a charge. You're going to have a transmitter. You're going to have a plane, you know, but then the next one might only be another 300 bucks. Then you're in it like a thousand bucks, right? Well, it's not as bad. It's the first one that's tough. We got to get you over the hump. We got to get you taught how to fly and we got to get you getting some of the good stuff because the good stuff is what's going to keep you in the air yeah. while you develop enough skill to fly the garbage. And I, <laughs> it is so hard. You guys totally think I'm trying to sell you on this. And it's true because I did it myself. If you buy the garbage, you're going to learn garbage and you're probably going to struggle to make it. Okay, fortunately, I had some good people that encouraged me to get into some good stuff. I had some people that were getting out of the hobby, gave me some good things when I was first starting that helped me get under my, you know, start learning. And I also had a grandpa who was, you know, had lots of planes and stuff that he had worked on. And so he helped get me into the hobby too, because it's expensive to start. But once you're started, you're good. You know, you buy a few good quality items and you just use them for the duration of your hobby, or at least for a few years at a time. And then over time, you figure out what's important to you and you start perpetuating those things. Like, hey, I really like tricycle uh, sport aircraft like this. That's what I predominantly do. But then every once in a while, I'll get myself an EDF jet like this Viper, okay? Or I really, really like 3D flying. So I'm gonna go over here and get this Flex, Flex RV8, okay? Whatever it is, you're gonna figure out what you like and then you're gonna come out here and you're gonna say, okay, what did Brian think of that? Because he's gonna tell me the truth. And then we're gonna help you to make a decision based on how horrible our experience was or how great it was. And then you can use that to help save your money on the garbage and put it toward the good. And so full circle, we've closed the loop. That's what we do here on Brian Phillips RC. It's just all kind of in the scope of what we do and we love doing it and we know that you guys are here to support us. So thank you for doing it. The mall is gonna be awesome. 1.5 meters of pure delight running on 3200 4S. Now, you can also run these on 3S just to be totally clear. I'm gonna run it on 4S because I like the stole performance that you get from 4S. You do not need 4S to make this plane fly well. So, that all being said, did I miss anything, camera crew? I think we got it all. We got it all? Yep. All right, guys. If you haven't seen us at Joel Noll, look for us at Joel Noll 2023. If you're watching this 2023, we're gonna be at Joel Noll on what days? Um, March, no, May 18th and 19th. 18th and 19th. Okay, so that's Thursday and Friday. Thursday and Friday. Maybe, maybe Wednesday, 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 maybe it's Saturday. Saturday. Depends, Depends on, on what flights. our flight schedule is. Yes, yes, that's right. We are flying in without children. It's going to be weird. Very. And we have the in-laws, my in-laws, her not in-laws, watching the children. So it's going to be cool. And mm -hmm. they're going to have some fun while we're gone. Hopefully we'll come back and the house won't be burned down. But there's always that possibility. We'll just stay there if that's the case. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see you there. And if we didn't see you there, we'll see you at the next one. We really appreciate you guys. World's best audience on YouTube here on Brian Phillips RC signing out. Oh, don't forget, by the way, check out brianphillipsrc.com. That's Megan's labor of love. Helps to outline all the stuff we've done because we got like 17, 18, 1900 videos right now that are live. And that means that there is a lot of content. It's hard to search on YouTube. You can search over there by manufacturer. We're working on a type search as well. Mm -hmm. So like you could be like float planes, tricycles, we're trying to get it to where you can search by any of those criteria, and then you can do kind of like a one-stop shop and then you can find what you want and you can compare the competitive brands side by side. I'm sure they're going to love that. Probably. But uh, we're okay. here to serve you. So at the end of the day, that's what we do and we hope that you guys enjoy it. We, we obviously know you do to a certain extent or we wouldn't be doing it still. So smash the like button if you haven't already. We appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching.